In today's video, I'm really excited to show you how to implement eye tracking by using the MetaQuest Pro and also the Movement SDK. I'm also going to show you a new component called the OVR Eye Gaze that is going to give you additional information such as rotation and position of your eyes. I'm also really excited to walk you through how to implement your own ray, which is going to be generated from the center of your eye up to a distance that we designate through a script that we're going to be creating. So I also want to invite you to join me in Patreon, where I'm going to be putting the Blender files that you saw in this video, in addition to the complete project that we're going to have by the end of this video. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and extract these eyes from a model that I've been playing with as I learned Blender. So I'm going to go ahead and disable here the face. I'm also going to go into my modifier here and make sure that I don't have any mirrors. And if I go into my eyes here, you can see that now we can click on it. You're going to see that I have it set to 90. I'm actually going to set it to be about 180. And the reason for that is because of how that's going to be exporting into Unity. I'm also going to go ahead and clear all the transforms, make sure that, and then I also need my pivot point to be right in the geometry, basically in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and go into origin and then origin to geometry. And you can kind of see there's a little dot right there. And that is going to be the dot for the pivot point. Once you have that, we can go ahead and export this. I'm going to go ahead and export it to FPS. And all the settings in here are already set to go. So we should be able to just go ahead and export it. Once we export it, we can go back into Unity, Models. And then I'm going to go ahead and just drag and drop the exported model right into my Models folder. Now I can go ahead and drag and drop this in here. And you're going to see that now we have the eyes in here. And it's going to be, doesn't look right quite yet. And it might look OK, but we need to change some of the positioning. So, but before we do that, we need to also add a camera rig. So I'm going to go ahead and search for full synthetic. It's going to be the one that I need. Go ahead and drag it and drop it in here. I'm also going to go ahead and change the color here or the of the center camera. So let's go ahead and expand this, go into here all the way down, solid color here. And I'm going to go ahead and set it to black. And we can go back into a skybox. Now, this guy right here, I'm going to go ahead and rename it. It's going to be I Interactor. So let's go ahead and rename that. And then if you notice, this is already offset. So I'm going to go ahead and change everything here to zero, including the X rotation. So if you look at the X rotation, though, it's pointing to the canvas. And that's the way that we want it to point. The eyes are going to be pointing forward. So just make sure that you have that. And then I'm also going to go ahead and change this to be 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.15. And if we go ahead and go all the way up, for some reason, this expanded completely. We don't need this all expanded. We go ahead and expand that and collapse it. OK, so now that we have that, we can actually extend here. And we'll need this too. And I'm going to go ahead and place it here. But before we do that, let's go ahead and drag the eye interactor. And we're going to go ahead and add it. And yeah, it's going to be an original prefab. And now we can just go ahead and drag it as one of the items in the, the tracking space. OK, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and add a new component. It's going to be OVR eye gaze. And it's going to be for the left eye in this case. Confidence value, I'm going to set it all the way to 0. This is how much we trust the SDK to capture our eyes. And anything over than 0, it's going to be basically information that we're getting from our eyes. We're going to be tracking the position, rotation, and this is going to be headspace is going to be for your skeleton, world space is going to be the world space, and then tracking space is going to be you know anything that we're doing here in the tracking space. And then what I'll do here, I'll create a new game object, and it's going to be for the reference frame. Basically, it's going to be right here in the middle of both our eyes. So that's how the movement SDK did it. So I'm going to go ahead and follow that. And then we can also offset this to be about 1. Go ahead and do that. And if we go back in here, now we should have everything. I can just go ahead and do override, apply. And let's go ahead and go into scripts. And we're going to be creating a brand new C -sharp script. Let's go ahead and create. It's going to be eye tracking, right? Basically, it's going to be a line render. And also, it's going to have using the physics ray to basically determine what we're colliding with. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to require here is going to be a component. And this component is going to be of type, type of. And I'm going to do a type of line render. Let's make sure that you do that. And I think I just need one more parenthesis in here. And then the next thing that I'll need, though, is I'm going to be putting a ray distance. So we're going to need ray distance. And it's going to be set to 1.0. 
I'm also going to have float. It's gonna be the ray width. And then I think I did that to be 0.01. So we can just go ahead and do that. I'm also going to be needing uh, an actual layer mask because we need to determine what layers are going to be including on the actual ray cast. So I'm just gonna do layers to include. And then we can just do that. I also need to do these ones to serializable. So, because I want people to be able to update him through the inspector, so it should be okay. And then I'm also gonna need another serializable fill. I like the machine learning here on Visual Studio 2022, trying to determine what I am actually typing. So that's pretty cool. And then on the color, there's gonna be gray color default state. The reason why I did this is because the default state I want it to be, you know, if we're not selecting anything with our eyes, it's going to be currently set to, to yellow. Otherwise, we're gonna be setting it. Let's see if this completes the color. No, it didn't. That's okay. Ray color, and then this one we can just call it hover state. And just know that we might have other states later on for today. I'm just gonna do this. But I might have a selecting state where we're doing a pinch to actually select it as we're looking at items. For now, we'll just keep it simple, but we're going to be extending this. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I need a couple of things to reference the line render that I'm creating. So it's gonna be here, the line render. I'm also going to be tracking all the things that I am selecting. So I'm just gonna do, there's gonna be a list of I interactable, which we're, we haven't created yet, but we'll create, so we'll come back to this. And then it's gonna be I interactables, and then we'll just create a new list. And the reason for, for me to do this is because I had issues with actually selecting two items at once. So if you have a line render that is colliding through and basically try and selecting two objects, then I needed to keep track of the objects that were selected, which ones were not selected. So I ended up doing a list to do that. I'll show, I'll show you how that works. We can also remove this and then it's gonna be line render and then we'll need to get the component because remember, this is the one that was added already to this object. And then I need to set up the ray so when I'm talking about ray though, this means that I'm setting up a ray basically just for visualization. This ray is not the one doing the collision. I'm gonna be using the physics uh, ray cache to be able to do the collision. So just know that there are gonna be two different things. So this one is gonna be setup ray, and then I'll just do void, it's gonna be private. So on the setup ray, I'm gonna say line render. This one is gonna be use world space, it's gonna be set to false, because we, we don't want to use world space in this case. I'm also gonna have different two different points on here. So the point count, I'm gonna set it to two. Line render. And then I'm gonna be summing the ray distance. So we can just say ray distance. And then we just need one more parenthesis in here. So this should be everything that we need to basically set up a ray from the position of the beginning position, the pivot point position of our eyes. Now, the next thing that we'll need to do is gonna be the fix updates. We can just go ahead and do that. I don't like including the private or public, I think it's given. And then for this one, I'm just gonna get the raycast, raycast hit. So it's gonna be, we can just set it to null. I think it's good have it just to set it to, to something. And we can just say, and it looks like he doesn't like it. So we can, okay, fine, we can just set it to that. And then we can say ray cast direction equal, and this is gonna be this transform right here that we have. And then transform direction is going to be, we're gonna be getting the forward direction. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply that by the ray distance. So this is gonna give us an accurate representation of, okay, if we're looking forward and then we're adding a distance, what are we colliding with anything? So right now this is just going to give us a vector then what we're gonna do on the next line is gonna actually do the, the actual check to see if we are colliding. So we're gonna do a raycast to do that. So we just do a raycast, and then I'm gonna start the raycast from the position. And then the direction that I just basically created, it's going to go on the second parameter. And then this is gonna be the, the, max, the max distance. And in my case, because I don't really care about performance, I think we can just do infinity. And I don't know that this really affects performance, maybe it does, but in my case, I think I think that's okay. We can just do infinity for our demonstration. 
obviously, if you're gonna do in Puntis in production, just make sure that you review everything and, and don't just trust me on it because you know you need to use a profiler and make sure things are working correctly. Okay, and then the next thing that I need to do though is I need to do a new method which is gonna be on select. And this is gonna determine, and not that one, this one. And this is gonna determine if I have something already selected. If I do, it's going to unselect it. We'll implement it here in just a minute. And then I'll do a start color here because we are selecting. So I'm gonna say gray color hover state. So it's gonna be a little bit different. We can copy and then just do end color. And then we can just say, and this one is gonna get the I interactable, which we still don't have that script, but I'm going to still code this and then we can go back and then review the whole thing. So the component that I wanna get is going to be an I interactable. The reason for that is because this has, is going to have a, basically a hover state. It's gonna keep track of itself, whether it is, you know, being hovered or not. And then also a color, whether it's selected or not, it's going to be all defined within this component. For now, we'll just pretend that it exists. And then I'll just say I interactable. This one is gonna, we're gonna be adding a new component. So actually we need to grab the list. And this is gonna be a list of I interactables. I need to keep track of those. And there's probably a better way to handle this. This is the way that I ended up doing it. So we can just say, in this case, we are hovering. And so we're gonna, we wanna set this to be equal to true. And this one right here, it's gonna get, you know, like I said, the component, we're gonna be adding that to the list. And then I can just say else, then we're gonna say line render. And then in this case, the start color, it's going to be, it's gonna be the default state, right? Because we no longer have that item selected. And then I can just do the same thing I did here. I can just copy and paste that. So I think it should be all good, except we need to do another component in here. Just, just in case we have some other things that are selected, I'm just gonna say, okay, unselect, and then also pass in a property, which is gonna be set to true. So let's go ahead and implement the select so that it makes more sense of why am I doing that. And then we'll just go ahead and delete the update for now. And we can say void on select. And this is gonna be taking a property called clear and I'm gonna set it to false. And this is so that we can clear the list that we're creating so that we don't have a memory leak. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, for each different component, so I'm gonna say var interactable in interactables and make sure that we have interactables. Okay, and then we can just go ahead and do that. For some reason, it's not finding this because we made it. Okay, so we call it I interactables. So we'll just go ahead and call that as well. And then here, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and clear the, the actual hover state to, to false, just in case we have, I like how this gets me into licensing here of what things I could do. And then I can just say clear here, and then I gotta get used to the IntelliSense because I think it got way better on, on this new version of the official studio. Okay, so that looks good. And I think everything else looks good in here. So this is what it's doing is basically, just in case we have anything selected, we're gonna go and loop through all of them and not selected, but hover. Selected is gonna be on the next video. Basically, we're gonna set it to false. And then if we set it to clear, which is gonna be the case in here, if we're not basically colliding with any items as we're doing a raycast, we're gonna be clearing our list. And then also, if we are hovering anything, then, you know, if we have a raycast that hits it, we're gonna be basically clearing it out. And then we're gonna be setting the appropriate color for the raycast that has been collided and also adding this item to our list. So that should be good. I think I have everything in here correctly. We can just go ahead and remove. Then the next one that I wanna implement is gonna be the I interactable. So let's go ahead and go back here and implement it. And yes, we're gonna get an error because we haven't implemented it yet. And I'm gonna go ahead and double click it, require component here. And let's see if I can do, okay, so we'll just do type off. And then on the type off, we're gonna be needing a collider because we're gonna be doing a physics right cast. So I want to make sure that the component that we are going to be adding this on has that component. And then I'm also going to be requiring that it has a rigid body. So we can just do that. And we can just get rid of this. Then what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna add a public property and this is gonna be our hover state, right? That we, we were accessing from the other script. And then we can just do a get and a set. And then by default, it's gonna be set to false. 
Then the next thing that I'll do here is I'm just gonna do serializable and then we'll just do a private. And this is gonna be a Unity event because in the case that you are interacting with this object, I want to be able to apply an action. So this just allow me to, to you know, extend the functionality of this component. So we can just say on object, on object, and we can say hover. I think it's it's a good name. And then we can do serializable fill. And then this is gonna be the different materials that we're gonna be changing on this component when it's selected. So we can just say on hover active material, and we can just copy and paste this. And then we can just say on hover inactive, inactive material. And I think that looks good. And then I just need a couple of different private properties, in, uh, no properties fields that we're going to be needing for in order, in order for us to be able to change the material. So we can just say that we need the, the mesh render. I think that looks good. And then on star, it's gonna be very basic. It's basically just gonna be a one liner. And this one, what I'll do here is I'll just say, you know, on star, go ahead and set the mesh render component. It's gonna be get component mesh render. And then what we'll do here is on the update method, we can keep track of whether something it's being, you know, hover or not. So I'm gonna add here a check for the is hover. So if it is hover, what we can say is we can grab our mesh render, set our material, and then associate it with the, 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 the proper material, which in this case is gonna be that. And then what I also want to do though, remember this method in here, this action, we want to make sure that it is defined. If it's not defined, we don't want it to, you know, to blow up. So let's go ahead and do a question mark just to check for any nulls. And then we can just invoke it. But I'm passing the game object because I want to make sure that I know which object is the one that I am basically doing a collision with the Raycast. So what I'll do here is I'll just go ahead and pass this object, which is gonna be just game object. And then on the else, we can do basically what we just did here, except it's gonna be a different material. So it's gonna be inactive material. So inactive. And I think everything else in here should be good. We can just clean it up. So now if we go into the actual eye interactor, I'm gonna go ahead and hit F in here. Just make sure I focus on the eyes and those eyes do look creepy. <laughs> Some of you told me that, but that's 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 okay. I think that keeps that keeps the attention on you. Okay, so once we add this line render, it's gonna be gi gigantic, right? And that's okay, we're gonna fix that. The width, I'm gonna set it to 0 0.01, and now you can kinda see that there's gonna be a ray. And this is, again, this is gonna be for visualization. Then the material though, we're gonna be using the default, I think it's called default line, if I remember correctly. The reason for that is because I'm gonna be using this material, the colors, to basically change this material. And because of this material, it's going to allow that, it's gonna basically change to the colors that we designated. And then I think everything else in here, I think we set this to, to false, it's okay. And then everything else in here should be okay. So if we look at the positions, we should have everything set correctly. And if you wanna leave it at one, I think you can leave it at one here for, for visualization. You can also set it to zero, the code is going to go ahead and reset everything. And then again, ray, dis ray distance, I think we can do something like five or, or six. Let's go ahead and set it to that. Layers to include, I wanna include everything. I don't really care which objects we're going to be doing a ray cast again. So I think everything else looks okay. So now what we can do is go ahead and click on override and then hit apply. And what I'm gonna do though, is I wanna do one for the left and one for the right. So we can just say, it's gonna be left eye. And then we can just copy and paste this guy. And then we'll just change just a small property here. And this one is going to be right eye interactor. And we can just drag it and drop it. And I think everything else looks fine, except we need to change this to be the right eye. And I think everything looks good in my opinion. So let's go ahead and set up one of the interactables that we're going to be dealing with. So we can go ahead and do, and just do a cube. I don't think it needs to be anything fancy. And then we can just set it to maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. And I'll go ahead and set it maybe right about here. I think it's fine. I'll just create a couple of them and then and then we'll just tweak it as needed. And then we just set these to, let's go ahead and do one. I think one is fine. On Z, we can just do one. And I think that looks okay. I also have a third party component in here that I ended up using for materials. 
that I like to use quite a bit. And we can just go ahead and go into the, I can't remember if we're using which pipeline. So let me go ahead and select here. And we are using the universal, so make sure that you use URP. And then if I go ahead and change this to be maybe a little larger so we can see everything, we can resize it. Okay, so if we go in here, I'm gonna call this one I interactable. And I'll just create a couple and then I'll show you a complete scene that has everything. So again, this one has a box collider. So we, if we do the I interactable, now I should add everything that we need. I'm also gonna be changing this to kinematic so it doesn't fall. And then the collider should be okay. And then the materials though, on the active material, we can do maybe something like orange and then on the inactive, it could be something like why I think that looks okay. And then we can go ahead and drag and drop this into our prefab sync here. We can just say, okay, this is gonna be our new interactable. But in fact, I actually wanna set this to zero, zero so that everything is clean. You wanna make sure you do that before you start changing some of those values. And then we can go ahead and go one and then we can do one. All right guys, so before we run this, we need to check the Oculus application here and go under beta. And you're gonna see that we don't have eye tracking over Oculus Link. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable that. It's gonna tell you that there's a disclaimer. It's gonna say, turn it on. Just make sure that you have that, otherwise it's not going to work. And then I also need to make sure that my OVR camera rig has eye tracking enabled. So if we go down in here, I think I already said it, but if you haven't, oh, it looks like I haven't. So make sure that you have that. I'm actually gonna say, eye tracking, face tracking, and body tracking because this is gonna be a series of videos that I do on Movement SDK. So make sure that you have that enabled. I think everything else should be okay. All right, looks like this is working perfectly. So let me go ahead and show you the eyes here so you guys can see the eyeball as it is moving. And there we go. And then I'll just go ahead and resize this one. So you can see that as I'm moving my head, everything gets moving, right? The rays are moving, the eyes are moving, and in fact, I can get a little closer in here. And the red is when things are not currently selected. So if I go look up, then actually yellow is when things are not currently selected. And then as soon as I select something, then it becomes, you know, the red color. And you guys, you guys can see how that is working. And the other thing that I don't see, it's there's nothing being logged, and I wanted to log some information, so we can fix that as soon as we finish here. But this is really accurate, right? So if you look at the ray, I can see, I can get close. I'm looking at that one, looking at that one, looking at that one. The other thing that I also want to do is I want to I'll go ahead and maybe I'll just do it on one of them so you guys can see. So the on hover stay is the one that I wanted to toggle. And basically what I'm gonna do is I have a debug area here and a logger. And again, this is available on the project. So just make sure that you, you look at it. And I have a log info and also a login for game object. This one just allows me to pass in the game object and basically display it. I went ahead and actually added a lot of different objects. So you guys can see I have a couple of cubes in there. And then, you know, as I select different items, then we have the different rays. I didn't realize that the ray color on one is different than the ray color on the other. I need to fix that. But you guys can see that the sphere is getting selected. Those ones are set to green. Those are different objects that I added. There's also, the different IDs is playing on the actual logger. And those are the hashes for each one of the interactables that I currently have selected. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys wanna get a copy of this project, go ahead and get it in Patreon. And I'm also going to be including the Blender file that is available and the one that I just showed you, which I'm gonna be showing and using for a lot of the videos in, in this series. So that's everything for today, guys. Thank you very much.